Thin layer chromatography, or TLC, is a quick and easy method for analyzing mixtures of organic compounds. A typical TLC plate is a plastic sheet that's been coated with a thin layer of silica gel, which is a white powder. A tiny drop of the solution to be analyzed is placed near the bottom of the plate onto the silica gel, which is described as the stationary phase, and then organic solvents, the mobile phase, are allowed to climb up the plate. As we can see here, the plate is getting gray as the it gets uh, wetted by the solvent as it climbs up through the plate by capillary action. As the stationary mobile phases interact, the components of the mixture will partition between the two phases. And based on polarity, certain components will have a stronger affinity for the very polar silica gel, while others will move more readily to the solvent. So the components of the mixture will travel up the plate at different rates. So we can see what starts as one single spot ends up separating into two components as the plate develops. Let's take a closer look at this process. Here we have two chambers, two TLC chambers, and we're going to vary the solvents to see how that affects the traveling rates of the spots that we're analyzing. Right now we're using a 50-50 mixture of ethyl acetate and hexane. And this blown up image of the TLC plate is representing the silica gel. The hexagons represent the silica gel, our stationary phase. And as the gray line is moving up, that's our mobile phase wetting the plate as it travels by capillary action. As we can see, the two spots are traveling at, at different rates. The red spot represents a more polar molecule, and the blue spot represents the less polar molecule. So the result of this TLC is that the more polar component, because it has a stronger affinity for the polar silica gel, is going to travel at a slower speed. And the less polar component has less affinity for the silica gel. It doesn't stick to that stationary phase as well, so it more readily travels with the solvent and travels a further distance. The distance travel is described as the RF of the um, compound, the retention factor. So the blue spot, the less polar comp component, will have a higher RF, and the red spot, the more polar component, will have a lower RF. Let's see if we can change the solvent composition and see how it affects the RF. We're going to make the chamber number two more polar by adding more ethyl acetate. Now it's 75% ethyl acetate. That's a more polar solvent. And in chamber one, we're going to make the solvent less polar by adding more hexane. So over here, we have a 75% mixture of 75% uh, hexane, 25% ethyl acetate mixture. So we're going to start our experiment and see how that affects the RF of our spots. Once again, the solvent's going to rise up the plate, and the components are still going to separate. But we're noticing that with a more polar solvent, the compounds seem to be traveling at a faster rate. And so ultimately, they're going to have a higher RF. With a less polar solvent, the compounds are traveling more slowly. So when we're all done, we're going to have higher RFs with the more polar solvent. And we're going to let the solvent rise till it almost, almost reaches the top of the plate. We'll mark that spot. We'll mark that level, uh, and, and that's how we can measure our RFs. So why is it that the more polar solvent results in higher RF values? Well, remember, the silica gel, the stationary phase, is very polar. And a more polar solvent is going to more effectively compete with that stationary phase and do a better job of drawing the compounds into the mobile phase, which causes them to move at a faster rate. Let's look at an extreme situation. What if we tried 100% ethyl acetate in, sol in our second chamber, a superpolar solvent, and 100% hexane, a totally nonpolar solvent, in the TLC chamber on the left? Okay, now again, both of our molecules, the red and blue, are both polar molecules. They're just varying in how polar they are. And let's watch what happens. When we use a totally nonpolar solvent, it is completely ineffective at moving our compounds at all. So they simply stay at the origin, and we would describe that result as um, having an RF of zero when they travel not at all. So this wouldn't be a very good solvent to do a TLC analysis. When we use a solvent that's too polar, the all of our spots move totally with the solvent front, and they end up at the very end all the way as far as our solvent traveled. That's described as having an RF of 1. So neither of these results are very good if we want to try and analyze our mixture. Ideally, we want a solvent where we do get a separation, and our 
and our samples are somewhere in between. Let's try one more mixture here. Let's do a little solvent. I'm oh, sorry. There we go. Ideally, we want a mixture where we want a TLC spot plate where all of our spots have uh, some RF in the middle of the plate, not at zero and not at one, and so we can analyze them and see that they've that they've uh, separated. Okay, just like a group of marathon runners who run at different speeds will separate over time, the components of the mixture get separated as the TLC plate is developed. So by letting it develop a a longer time, a further distance, we're going to get a better separation. Okay, and so when we were to analyze, if we were to analyze this mixture, we would say that the mixture has at least two components. It may have even more than two components because sometimes compounds will co-spot and they'll end up um, appearing as a single spot, even there's more than one thing in that mixture. Um, but we know that this is not a pure sample because it has at least two components. Uh, there are various ways that we can we can visualize our spots right now. We're showing it, um, you know, we're, we're seeing a red and a blue spot, but of course most organic compounds are colorless. And so a TLC plate looks just the same before and after it's been developed. And so what we could do is we can use a UV lamp to visualize these spots or use a stain maybe to, uh, to have them show up. Uh, and that's how we can very quickly and easily analyze a, a, a sample. And by varying our solvent that we use called the eluent by varying the solvent that's used to develop the TLC plate we can get um, uh, varying RFs to do our analysis. Thanks for watching and good luck with your TLCs.